Hello, off for another Doppler problem. So this is going to be one where it's a little more frustrating maybe because there are not going to be enough numbers for you to solve this totally numerically, which I know is frustrating, but it's a good practice for you to get used to thinking about how all these things work without just throwing numbers in at it. So let's figure out how to solve this one. The problem reads, a, tor a tornado siren starts up while you're driving in your car. You pull over and park, and you estimate the frequency of the noise once you are stopped is about 98% of what you heard when you were moving. How fast were you going before you parked? So we have one number, 98%. So what's the situation here? We have you in a car, and you're moving, and you hear a, a certain note, certain frequency from the tornado siren. Then you stop and you hear a, a different note. And that second tone is at 98% of the first one. So I'm just going to, I don't know what the number is. I don't know what the frequency is here. I don't know what the frequency is here. I just know that if this is F, this one's 98% of F. I'm moving here, not moving there. Okie dokie. <laughs> So you see why this one is a little bit weird. We've got an observer that's moving, because I'm the observer. So observer, observer. The source is somewhere else, and it is not moving. The tornado siren is not moving. I sure hope not, or it's a big tornado. So we need to figure out what is a good equation to use. So we have a moving observer. And now, am I moving towards or away from the source? Here's where we have to think this through. When I stopped moving, I heard a lower note. So it went down a little in frequency. So stopped moving, it's a lower note. When I'm moving, it's a higher note. So moving, I hear something higher. That means I'm moving towards. So that tells me that I am moving towards the source. So moving observer, moving towards the source. All right, that's going to give me this equation. The observed frequency is the source frequency times 1 plus or minus V observed over V sound. Plus or minus towards, OK, when I'm moving, I hear a higher note. So which of these signs is going to give me an increase in frequency? Well, it's going to be the plus sign. So I'm going to take the plus sign in this case. So here is my equation. F observed equals F source 1 plus V O over V sound. And now it's like, okay, what are we looking for? We want to know what is the velocity of the observer? How fast were we driving the car? So we want to know this. I know the speed of sound. I don't know that, and I don't know that. So you stop and you say, ah, I don't know what to do. Well, let's just not worry about numbers but let's think about what we've got up here. This is the observed frequency when I'm moving. So that's the frequency I'm hearing when I'm moving, the observed frequency due to the Doppler shift. When I'm holding still, that is not shifted at all. That is the frequency of the source. So I know the frequency of the source is 0.98F. I know the frequency uh, when, I'm sh when it's shifted, the observed frequency is just F. I can relate those two together. So let's rewrite this a little bit. I'm going to take Fs, the source frequency, bring it over to the other side. Equals 1 plus VO, and I get lazy, so I just start doing 345. Can I come up with an equation for FO over FS? I think I can, because FO is just whatever the unknown frequency is that I heard while, I, while the car was driving. FS is 0.98 of that frequency, equals 1 plus V O over 345. Look at that. It doesn't matter what the frequency is. It doesn't matter if I know what the tornado siren is sounding at, what the actual hertz number is. If I know that it's 98% when I stop moving, I'm okay. So when I get rid of the Fs, there's a 1 on top over 0.98 equals 1 plus V over 345. Look at that. One unknown. We got it. So 1 over 
minus 1 equals VO over 345. So if I do that math, what do I get? Um, okay, I'll do one more step. <laughs> I didn't do the math for that step. I did the math for this step. So at this point, I'm going to multiply both sides by 345. 1 over 0.98 minus 1. And that's the step I did the math for. So if you do that, you should get 7.0 meters per second, which is about I don't know, 15, 16 miles an hour. So it's not very fast, um, but you know, you're driving a Menominee, let's say. And it wasn't that huge of a shift because, I mean, from 100% to 98% of the tone, yeah, it's not very big. Now, could we use this to figure out what the tone of the siren is? Nope. We actually don't have enough information to figure out what this F value is in hertz. All we know is we had a 2% drop, and that is only going to happen when we're going at 7 meters per second. So that's all we've got. So it's a harder problem in some ways, but I have a lot less written on the board. The things you have to recognize here is that for this frequency, and then we have a drop in frequency, I can relate observed to source with this ratio, the 98% ratio. And then the usual thing where I have to make sure I have the right sign, if you, had, if you chose the negative sign when you got over here, you'd come up with a negative velocity, and that, wouldn't, that, would, that should tell you that you have something wrong. Um, in this case, a negative velocity is not saying you're going in the other direction. It's saying you made a math error or a physics error. So just be careful about that. We don't want negative velocities in here because technically we're just dealing with speeds. Speeds do not have direction. Speeds are totally just a number. Other than that, I think we've got this all. We've answered the question. It's a reasonable number. We're good. All right.